studio is a tip. Again, I'm incapable of making videos without making a tip at the same time. Right in here, I have, let me show you. I'm under strict instructions to look after these things, which I've never been told before that please look after it. That's either implying that previously I haven't looked after things or that other people haven't looked after them. One Oris, two Orises. I haven't seen these yet. I've only seen, I've only seen the computer renders so far. Got to be careful. I'm going to be careful. So today we are checking out, well, it's not going to be today. It's actually going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow, but it's your today. To Hang on. Welcome back to Bark and Jack, I'm Adrian. And first things first, I don't trust that this is actually 41.5 because I had these on the wrist yesterday and there's no way. All right, 41.4. All right, it is 41.5, well, 41.4. It just wears much smaller than what it makes out. I mean, it, it's quite obvious because look how the bracelet just droops straight down. Just a bit of housekeeping. Oris asked if I wanted to borrow these um, and I said, yes, no money been exchanged for this video and they have no control over what I say. I mean, as we're talking about measurements, we should probably just get straight into the specs. So the case is 41.5 millimeters wide. The lug to lug is 47.9 millimeters and it is 13.75 millimeters thick. It doesn't matter what the lug width is because this has an integrated bracelet. We have 300 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown. And a sapphire crystal has an anti-reflective coating on both the top and underside. As always, be careful of top side coated sapphire crystal because it can scratch off and you can notice it in certain lights, you can notice it. We have a ceramic unidirectional bezel. And if you flip it over, we have a display case back showing the caliber, the in-house developed caliber 400 movement. I've done a video on this movement already, the performance of it as an overview, it is a high performing movement, which is really impressive for a company the size of Oris to create. Uh, Oris is within the watch community, a well-known company, but they're an independent, unlike a lot of other brands within their same price range that are connected to larger companies, larger groups like the Swatch Group. If you think about Longines, their economy of scale, uh, Tudor who are connected to Rolex, their economy of scale and cash backing is far more powerful than Oris. So I think Oris deserves uh, more credit than what they're given for the creation of this movement. This movement is highly anti-magnetic. It's accurate from minus five to plus five seconds a day, which is within COSC certification. It isn't COSC certified because that's an extra cost, which would be passed obviously onto the customer and part of Oris's offering. And I think part of the strong side of Oris is the price point at which they are at. And obviously if things were COSC certified, that would push the price of this watch up. One of the big selling points of this movement is the fact it has 120 hours, five days of power reserve, which is incredible. There is a challenge around this movement. I'd, I'd call it a quirk as opposed to a challenge, uh, which I didn't notice in my original video because I only got hands on with the watch for about 15 minutes. But after the Calibre 400 was released last year, Engineer Wannabe, another YouTube channel, I'll put a link to his video down below, he noticed when he received his watch and spent time with it, that when you actually set the time on the watch, so obviously when you pull the crown all the way out, it hacks the seconds and allows you to accurately set the time of the watch. That's the whole point of hacking seconds. When you return the crown to its first position, and so re-engage the whole movement, the minute hand then jumps forward a couple of minutes, obviously then rendering the time setting inaccurate, not correct, but the correct way of setting the time. And this wasn't well communicated by Oris at the time. And this is one of the challenges of buying watches online. Watches, as we all know, are mechanical devices. They aren't simple products. There are things that watch companies can do to make them more simple and have an easier user experience. But it's just like when you buy a car, there are things you have to do to the car to keep it going and to operate it in a correct fashion. You need to change it or you need to get it serviced. You need to maintain that side of the engine. When I bought my diesel 4x4, the salesperson explained to me that every week or so, I need to go on a long, at least a long, hard 30 minute drive. Was that with the car? 
to clear out any gunk that's stuck in the exhaust system. And that's exactly the same with watches. Watches need to be operated in a certain fashion. For example, you shouldn't change a date when the time is between nine o'clock and three o'clock. It changes for all watches. So when it comes to the time setting function of this watch, uh, Oris communicated later on that you just need to rock the, the crown backwards. So set the time, rock the crown backwards, and then re-engage it and it won't jump. Another way to do it is if you just get into the routine of going past the time, and this going back again ever so slightly, and then the movement will operate in exactly how you would expect it to operate. This quirk has come about because of how Oris has squished all of this stuff within this relatively small movement. To have five days of power reserve, those springs have to take up space, and that means that other bits have to move around and be squished together. And so it's something to do with the date will, the spring of the date will being connected to something else. I don't quite understand it, uh, but that's essentially how you get around it. I actually quite like little quirks like that within movements. Um, it's like with my Explorer, for example, um, doesn't like it if it's just cold started. If my Explorer is completely dead and I wind it by hand, the movement actually starts going backwards, which is really quite bizarre. So I don't cold start it by, by winding it. I just give it a bit of a shake. Is it perfect? No, but. That's just how things are. Quite a sick little case by Black Chest. The guy who runs Black Chest is a mate of mine and he's given me this box. He actually has one more co-branded Black Chest that he's giving away. If you're in Europe and you want one of these Black Chests for free, all you have to do is follow Bark and Jack on Instagram, follow Black Chest UK on Instagram and comment on Black Chest's latest post on Instagram. In two weeks, Black Chest will announce on their Instagram page who the winner is of the free co-branded Black Chest. The Aquis for Oris is a hugely successful line for them. It is their main line and it's uh, it's kind of understandable why it's their main line. Dive watches are very popular, integrated bracelets are very popular and this for £2,700 is a massive amount of watch for the money. I'd say the clasp is probably one of the weaker parts of the watch. We have a bracelet extension within the clasp. There is no on the fly extension. Um, and I think that's one of the challenges of creating such a high performing movement in an affordable watch. I kind of expect to see other features being in here, but that would not just drive up the cost. It, it's, it's hard to accept that this is a £2,700 watch with this level of movement, this level of build quality, but it is a shame that there isn't some on the fly adjustment. I'd also like to have a slightly chunkier clasp. I'd like it to be, this is a beastly case. This is a heavy case. It's, it's got a really nice weight to it. It's thick and chunky. You feel it on your wrist. Um, and then I just feel like this, this clasp is just a little too dainty. Whilst we're on the bracelet and actually the overall watch, I'd like to see a matte Aquis. There are lots of shiny elements on this dive watch. The bezel is ceramic, it's very shiny. The steel surround for the bezel is shiny. You then have the top side of the crown guards, which is a mirror finish. You then have the outer links of the bracelet, which are all mirror finishes. I'd like to see Oris take this to be an out and out tool watch, not just functionality, because they've done that, <laughs> uh, but to do that aesthetically as well. Oris, if you want to do a watch, I'd, I'd, I'd happily do a watch. I've got ideas. I've got ideas, Oris. I just personally love to see them remove all the shininess from this watch and just go to town with the whole tactical tool vibe of this watch. Another little criticism, I love a, a, a positive and a criticism at the same time. I love the fact that they've integrated a very easy to use quick release mechanism here. Uh, but a criticism to that is then uh, a rubber strap, which looks amazing on this thing. Uh, it looks like a great rubber strap, but we're talking about over 200 pounds for the rubber strap, which I think is, uh, that's a sizable chunk of cash. That's near enough 10% of the watch. With the integrated bracelets at this price point, I think is a bit of a challenge. If you think about uh, the Royal Local, the Nautilus, if you're buying that level of watch, a 20, 30, 40,000 pound watch, that's not gonna be your only watch. And so you don't need it to be versatile. You don't need it to be uh, suitable for different occasions. Equally, you don't need the strap to be able to be changed because you have other watches that you can wear. Whereas with a watch of this level, I could imagine someone buying an Aquis and that being their only watch, their only expensive watch. And even if you don't change a strap on a watch, I think the psychology behind it being a decision maker is a big one. If this had normal lugs and not an integrated bracelet, if it had normal lugs that you could put uh, aftermarket straps on, 
I wonder if they would sell more. Maybe that's why they've done it like this because they've designed it to be a bracelet watch as opposed to a strap watch. They have the Diver 65, which looks amazing on pretty much any strap. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts on the Oris Aquis, the 41 millimeter. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, hit the subscribe button down there and that little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you wanna check out the watch straps and watch accessories, we've launched a new strap over at barkandjack.com. This is our Desert Sand Tubular Nylon NATO strap. This strap is stopping me from selling my Black Bay 58. But if you wanna check out the straps, watch accessories and coffee, jump over to barkandjack.com and check out what we have over there. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack. And if you use Reddit, check out our Reddit page, which is reddit.com forward slash r forward slash bark and jack i'll see you guys next time take care